Good morning. It is a kind of a rainy day. We've had a lot of those lately. And, but it's time for me to get out here and get some things harvested out of the garden. And then I've got a super fun, fresh recipe I wanna share with you guys of something you can do in the early summer. Two things that go really well together. So, so let's talk garlic scapes real quick. I wanna tell you guys a couple things about them. So you can see I'm here at my garlic. Um, garlic scapes are simply this part right here it's the part that's going to grow up and it's got a bulb on the end of it and it's eventually going to grow a flower um, it's going to open up with seeds in there and that's what the scape is is the garlic trying to produce seeds to reproduce itself and that's what most plants are doing if you leave them long enough they will go to seed but garlic scapes are delicious to eat, as well as if you harvest them to eat them, you're actually doing your garlic a favor. So um, let's look at these. You can see some of these are starting to curl. Um, and, and in fact, that is when a lot of people will tell you to harvest them, is when they get one curl on them and start to go back up, that's when they will harvest them and they'll cut them off right down here at the base. So let's get a few harvested. So you just wanna cut it right down here where it meets the top leaves here on the garlic. Now you could hear how I had some trouble cutting through this. This end is pretty large. It's turned fibrous and a lot of people will call it woody. You're gonna wanna trim that off. You can do it inside or outside, or you can honestly just keep this part that is actually too fibrous to eat. You can throw it in soups and stews and things to provide flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. I'm gonna jump up here. This is woody quite a ways up because I let this get a little too long. And I will go ahead and take this off and I will compost all this down out here outside rather than taking it inside and having to mess with it in there. So this one is pretty, pretty tough. So I'm probably gonna try to harvest some more. Like this is tough all the way down. So I've let this get entirely too tall. You can see the flower is already opened. A lot of people will trim these off before this ever even opens. When you do that, that's when you're doing your garlic bulb that you are trying to grow and harvest a favor because instead of it putting energy into growing that flower head on top, it is now putting all its energy into growing the bulb underneath the ground. So let's take a look at some that are more suitable to be harvested. This right here is a good one. You can see it's not gotten so big and tall that that is opened. It's got the first curl. I'm gonna cut it and see if it feels different when I cut it. So that absolutely felt different when I cut it. You can really feel it better too. I just grabbed a knife out of my kitchen, but you can really feel it better if you do this with scissors too. If it just snips right through there, then uh, you can tell it's pretty th tender and not thick and fibrous. Uh, it's kind of like asparagus that has gotten too big, but uh, it's a little difficult to feel with this knife, but I mean, you, you're gonna be able to tell when you get inside and start chopping them up. So I'm gonna get some cut because for the recipe I'm gonna show you, we need about a cup. Um, and like I told you, you can keep the ends that are too big and fibrous. You can put those in stocks and um, broths and things like that, soups and things. You probably just wouldn't wanna eat them. You can do the same thing with the bulb uh, that's not open or is open or whatever. You can put that in things to flavor it. Scapes have a mild garlic flavor. They're not nearly as pungent and strong as garlic, but they do have a lot of health benefits, just like garlic does, on your heart, um, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, even uh, there's people that believe they fight cancer, all kinds of different things. So uh, they're really good for you. Any part of this can be kept and used. So I got them all harvested. I wound up cutting them all off, even if they were too fibrous for me to use, um, just to make the rest of the energy in these last couple weeks of growing go down to the bowl. These scapes will start to be ready about three or four weeks before you're ready to harvest your garlic. I mean, I told you earlier in the video when they start to curl and go back up, you need to harvest them then. I let them curl and go back up and grow quite a bit. But when you see that first curl start going back up, that's when you ideally need to harvest them. I was not able to keep all of these because they were fibrous. Uh, like I said, you can for things that you're gonna just cook them in, but they're not gonna be desirable to chew 
So we need some lemon balm. So I've brought a knife out here. I'm just gonna cut some off. Um, you can see this herb bed needs some serious help. There's all kinds of herbs down in here. We've got oregano, I've got parsley down in here. This is actually parsley going to seed. Um, I've got, this is lemon balm. I've got sage over here. I've harvested some off this. I've got echinacea flowers. Those will be awesome to harvest this fall, harvest the roots and things. I did have a thyme plant, but I'm, I'm thinking it's been choked out. But let's talk about this lemon balm. So lemon balm is actually in the mint family. And you know, if you've ever grown mint, it will quickly, quickly take over a bed. It'll take over wherever you plant it. And that's exactly what this lemon balm has done. Now I'm gonna harvest some today for a good, fresh, early summer pesto. But do just keep that in mind when you're planting lemon balm is to where you plant it. And you're gonna have to keep it trimmed or it will take over. So we are back inside with our veggies and I'm going to show you how to make a really fantastic early summer pesto. Now, I don't know where you guys are, but around here, basil is not super thriving just yet, at least not for me. So a lot of times basil is your main ingredient in pesto, but this is actually not going to have any basil at all. So there is so many variations on pesto. A lot of people don't even use a recipe. There's some basic things that is in most pestos and they will use something from that category and make a pesto out of it. Now, a few of those things are oil, a good quality olive oil. Today, I'm gonna to be using Squizitos. And you know, that's my favorite olive oil. This is actually the basil olive oil because I did want to give it a little bit of a basil kick to it. Um, and then a hard cheese. Today I'm gonna to be using Parmesan, but you can use any hard cheese that you want to. Some type of nut or seed, I'm using walnuts. You could use pecans, you could use sunflower seeds. Um, you can use cashews or almonds or just really the list is endless. A little salt and pepper. A word of caution is if your nuts are salted, mine are not, these are raw. Um, then you would probably want to cut back a little bit on the salt and pepper. Now I'm going to put down in the description the amounts of each thing I used and uh, that way if you want to recreate this yourself. But I'm going to walk you through the steps to do this. It's super easy. So here are the stars of the show and I'm going to give them a good rinse because these did come from outside in the garden. They've been in my garden basket this morning while I've been harvesting things. So we need to get them rinsed off. Garlic scapes and lemon balm leaves. So these garlic scapes are gonna be basically the star of this show. We wanna cut them in about half inch pieces. Um, and this is what I was telling you outside. If some of these are very fibrous, like I can already tell these are, uh, I'm going to discard some of that because I don't want that in my pesto. So we're gonna cut in about just roughly half inch pieces. It's not any kind of exact rocket science. And I can already tell some of these are fibrous. So I'm gonna have to probably do this one or two at a time um, so I can discard some. So you're gonna want about a cup of these. These are actually easier to cut than they are to, to chop with a knife. I mean, it gives you a good feel. Like you can see how this one is just cutting beautifully. It's not fibrous. You're gonna be able to tell if it just strings off of there or won't hardly cut, that one's not gonna be very tender at all. So just keep cutting these until you have a cup. So the next thing we need is a half a cup of, we're gonna use loosely packed lemon balm leaves. And if you are in a climate, anything like us, lemon balm is going crazy right now. So this is a good way to use some of those and not just let them go to waste. So let's get to making it. But first you might be thinking, why do I even want to make this? What am I going to do with pesto? Well, pesto is awesome and so great with pasta, number one. Also, this is going to be a lemony, garlicky pesto. This would be excellent on seafood, top it on salmon or anything like that, any kind of fish really or seafood, um, as well as as a dip. You can use this as a dip with chips or vegetables or anything like that, or something you might not have thought of as a spread for sandwiches. It gives a really good 
herby type kick to sandwiches, um, it would be really delicious that way. So the possibilities are really just endless. You can just use your imagination and get it in there anywhere. It's really super good. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, this is a cheap food processor that I just bought at Walmart a few years ago. Uh, but any food processor will basically work. So first thing we're gonna do is we just have the garlic scapes in there. So we are going to, I have to lock the lid down and then we're just gonna pulse until those start to break down. One thing about making pesto, you're gonna have to stop periodically and scrape down your sides. Now a rubber spatula works excellent for that. Just scrape down so it keeps getting blended up. So it's broken these down somewhat. Um, I'm gonna pulse that some more because those were kind of stemmy, some of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the nuts in before I do that. Again, I'm using walnuts. It's a fourth of a cup of nuts to the measurements I told you on the garlic scapes and the lemon balm. So keep scraping. You wanna get it all down in there and incorporated really well. Next, we're gonna put our lid back on and instead of pulsing, we're just gonna set it to blend and we're gonna drizzle in the olive oil. And finally, we're gonna put in the lemon balm leaves. I'm gonna spread those out in there. A little salt and pepper. And our cheese. And we're gonna blend all that together. And that is kind of what it will look like when you get it all mixed up. And that's it. I'm so excited to try it. Gonna be putting that on some pasta in the next couple nights. So if you don't wanna eat that right now, you can actually put it down in your jar, pack it down in there and put a little layer of olive oil over top of it, stick it in the fridge for like at least a week. It should be good. If you're gonna be eating off of it uh, pretty quickly, I've never had any trouble not doing that. We just usually use it up in the next few days. So I hope you guys give that a try. It's really easy. It's a good thing to do right now. If you don't necessarily have basil or you just want a new twist on pesto, I encourage you guys to give it a try. I promise you we will be around here in the next couple days. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hit subscribe if you haven't so you stay tuned to all our videos and you get notifications. Hit that bell as well and we will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. God bless. One last tidbit I wanted to mention before I jump off here. We are shipping again. We have chicken, uh, several variety boxes for you guys. We're shipping to all the lower 48 states. Gonna give it a try. Only place we're not shipping is apartments, condos, um, places where if multiple people live there, they will not leave that for you guys. We've ran into that problem multiple times. Someone has to be home and that's just caused several lost packages. So we're gonna pause on that, but anywhere else we are shipping. Um, and then pork is coming in the next couple days actually. So stay tuned over there. We'll be offering some pork variety boxes as well. And finally, I got to be a guest on um, Squizito's cooking show. So I'm gonna link their channel below. Go check them out, subscribe to their channel. Check out me and Emily getting to be on their channel and a great recipe. One of our favorite recipes here on our farm um, is Emily's famous chocolate chip cookies. And we got to make those uh, with butter oil. So they're actually dairy free. They were super good. Go check that out. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. God bless.